deeper level of worship. If you want to understand that, you got to understand some things concerning worship. And I want to take you somewhere, and I want to show you something over in John, the fourth chapter, the third, 23rd verse, 4 and 23. I want to begin to give you some quick nuggets, and I want to break down some things so that our, our worship can go deeper and deeper. The Bible says that the, the Spirit of God, God himself, the deep calls unto the deep. And that means if you want to go deeper in things, you got to have an understanding, at least allowing your faith to, uh, to be dragged down into a deeper relationship with him and a deeper worship. Over in John 4 and 23, it says, but the hour is coming. Now, Jesus was speaking in that time frame, and then he shares something else. And then he says, and now is. The hour is coming, and now is. For some is coming. For others, now. For some, is coming, but for others, it's now. We have experienced and are experiencing what is coming. And until you get to that place where you get into that, into that atmosphere where you are now in the atmosphere of the now, you see, now is no opportunities wasted. When you get into the atmosphere of now instead of the coming, you're not just and you're not anticipating anything. You're swimming in it. There's a difference in something that's coming and something that's now. That means something that is coming has not yet arrived. And it's not that it has not arrived for all of us. It's just that you have not delved into it if it is not now. And so Jesus said the, the time is coming and now is somebody if you're the now is say I'm the now is. I'm the now is come on look at somebody and say I'm the now is it says when the true worshipers mm, will worship that's the key the true worshipers will worship you see until you become the now you're not the true I know that may tickle your fancy a little. But until you get into the now, some people are still always, always waiting for something. You got to get out of that mode of waiting. God is already here. How many of you know he is here to take care of every need, to, to satisfy every need, to touch you in every place you hurt? He is not trying to arrive somewhere as if it's going to take him a few hours to get here. How many of you want him now? You need him now. You are hungry now. You want to eat now. You want the presence of God now, not tomorrow, right now. Hallelujah. You ought to be ringing his doorbell. Are you listening to you? To me? Are you listening? You ought to be ding dong. And so the hour is coming and now is. Have you ever caught that revelation? We know that it's coming, but why is, did he say it's coming and now is? Because for some it's coming, for others it's now. And then he says something, and when the true worshipers, he says when the true worshipers, and when the true, the true worshipers, I'm thankful for this, will worship. The Father, not their religious orientation, not some human being. They will worship the Father. How? In spirit and in truth. And spirit and truth. And it says, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Now, let me ask you the question. Is he seeking worship? No. No, that's not what it says. He is seeking the worshiper. You see, worship is actually relationship. When my wife and I get together and we see each other, that's fellowship. That's relationship. And when re relationship isn't real, that means somebody is not seeking somebody. And when you're really seeking something, you'll go out looking for it. I believe God is scanning the planet for worshipers. 
who will worship. He's not expecting you in terms of saying, I'm looking for you to do this powerful thing and worship me. He's expecting you to show up as a true worshiper. That means if there are true worshipers, there has to be the opposite of them, false worshipers. There are people who say that they're worshiping, but I'm trying to figure out what are you worshiping in? Because if you're going to be a true worshiper, you worship in spirit and ah now see you got me started on this thing somebody say yes put me in the key of C <laughs> no. it says now God is spirit he is not a spirit God is spirit that means he is the spirit of all spirits. He is the father of all creation. Everything derives from him. So God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in, somebody say it again, in. That means the only true way of worshiping God is in something. What is it in? Spirit and in truth. So you can't get on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's not talking about in church. That's why you don't have to come to church to worship. You worship in the spirit of God. Ah, I feel the Lord in this place. <laughs> now catch this. Now I want you to turn to something real fast. Uh, just turn up, go up to, to, to the 16th chapter. The 16th chapter, the 13th verse of St. John, it says, however, I love the however, when he, for those who thought he was just a gender uh, slicer, a he and a she, <laughs> when somebody said, well, I wonder is the Holy Spirit a he, well, it just refers to him as he. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into, he will steer you into all truth. That means everything will be bared open, lay open before God, and there is nothing that's in your life that you need to shield or hide, not only from God, but from one another. Hallelujah. So he says, he's going to guide me into taking my shields off. He's going to guide me into taking my clothes off. He's going to deliver me from the shame so I can open myself up. It's when you have shame that you can't expose who you really are. Against what God asked for you to do, or you're doing something against your spouse, or whatever the case may be, you have too many closets and closed doors. God wants every part of your life to bear open. And so He guides you into all truth. For He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you things. To what? To come. How many of you know there's nothing that should really take you off guard? Mm. He will glorify me. Jesus was never unaware of anything that happened. Nothing ever showed up and he said, oh my God, now look at what I got to do. It says, he will glorify me. That's the Spirit of God. For he will take what of Excuse me, he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So he is going to take what Jesus Christ had and tell you, you got it too. Maybe you didn't get that. Maybe that's not a reason to rejoice. But he's going to tell you that whatever Christ had, whatever he had in him, whatever he had on him, whatever he had around him, you have it in you. He's going to declare it. That means he's going to prophesy it and speak it out and show you what you already have so that you don't have to go around thinking, I got to get. For he says, all things 
Somebody say all things. That the Father has are mine. Everything God has, Jesus said, is mine. And therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it unto you. How many things are yours? Oh, that's plain and simple, isn't it? You see, there is power in worshiping God. If we want to see breakthroughs in our lives and in the lives of others that we are connected to, then this is the time to enter into a deeper level or deeper levels of worship, both personally and corporately. It, it, it is only as we ascend to the throne room of God in worship that we descend back into a harvest field on earth. Once you get up into the presence of God, and how are you supposed to go? Boldly. Glory to God. Praying and warring and victory for us comes something that is easy to accomplish because we know that we have gone into the presence of God, and therefore we descend as after we ascended, we descend and perform all the works that Christ has done in the earth. The Bible says over in Matthew 6 and 8, Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask. In this manner, he says in this manner, he didn't say exactly. He says in this manner, pray. And I'm only going over a few verses here. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I need you to catch something. He says, your kingdom come, anticipation. Your will be done in past tense. Have you ever caught it? Have you ever caught it? Your kingdom come, your will is done. <laughs> it's just me, it's just me then. So when you come, uh, 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 you and I come boldly to God's throne in worship, he gives us his plans and strategies for our lives here on earth. And there is no way that we can walk into his presence and experience his peace and power and perfect plan without a lifestyle of worship. Worship is a lifestyle, people. Worship restricts carnal pride. Let me say that again. Worship restricts carnal pride. Fear and pride are close traveling companions. And we are born into this earth with innate fear. You all know that. And so we enter life with our fists clenched. And the rest of our lives we spent trying to learn how to let go. You came into this world, every child with your fists clenched. But you literally have to learn how to let go and let God. Mm. It was a battle to get you out of the womb. Now it's a fight to get you back in it. Not your mother's, but what John the Baptist, what Jesus was sharing with Nicodemus. You got to be born. A ah! And so our faces, we hide our fears, our facades of pride. So worship confronts pride. Because worship requires openness, true worship. It, it requires forthrightness, acknowledgement of need, and presentation of self. It takes all of that for true worship to occur. So if you want a deeper level of worship, get out of yourself and open yourself up and allow the Spirit of God to be what He wants to be. Somebody shout glory in your